Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 71 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net and I'll do my best to try to answer them. So let's get right to it, shall we? First one's called the 8-inch curve of Earth. What's up, Mark? I just got into this stuff recently. Imagine that, at the age of 51, but hey... I was always skeptical and could not reconcile some of the things told to me to be true. I have one question about something that I keep hearing, and it's the 8 inches squared. Why? <clears throat> if you put 25,000 people one mile apart, the curve will be 8 inches from one to the next. There's no reason to square. Hey, you were wrong. You have to because it... it, it starts getting steeper and steeper if it's a curve you're thinking of a slope the total measure of the curve or drop should be much less than the actual miles no you're not accounting for outward movement which is much greater number look we didn't come up with this eight inches per mile squared that is not a flat earth number that is mainstream and he continues on spheres and circles are a bit more difficult so i'll use straight lines as an example some basic concept if you're standing atop a building that is thousand feet straight down is exactly that but if a skydiver jumps off and lands five thousand feet away it's still going only to be one thousand feet of drop not five thousand what even though his path is tracking downward the entire time because he is moving four feet sideways for every foot down and similar to the circle it's moving much more sideways than curve I think it's 8 inches for a mile, 24 for 3 miles, and so on. No, that is a slope. That is a set of stairs. Don't try to account for all the drop when you're also moving sideways. Tell me where I'm going wrong. <laughs> I have no problem with that. But if I'm right, we're still not seeing that much either. I, no, 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 no. It's 8 inches per mile squared, I, which is 8 inches times every mile times itself. So it's 8, inch, eight inches per mile per mile, which sounds a little bit like 32 feet per second per second. Uh, which is means at three miles, it's not 24 inches. It's three times three, which is nine times eight, which is 72 inches. And then like, for example, if it's 10 miles, it's 10 times 10, which is a hundred times eight, which is 800 inches. And it gets worse from there. A uh, hundred miles would be hundred times, hundred times. It's a lot. It's a lot. It, it's get wor it gets worse and worse. Because remember, if it's, it's, if, it's, if it's a sphere, it's got to go vertical eventually. So that's right. It's a common mistake, which is why I try to tell you, look, mainstream science has lost most of the population now because we're talking basic al algebra here and well, some geometry, but it's a little bit of algebra and geometry, which is eight inches. In fact, I've told people this. I say eight inches per mile and they're, they're with me like you are. And then I say squared and then they glaze over. So we'll get there. Don't worry. Moving on. This one's called Show Me. Show Me Proof. <laughs> Rick Mays. Uh, look up on YouTube. Type in Flat Earth. Start watching for about two weeks. Tell me how you prove the globe once you get there. Remember, I tried to hammer on this thing for nine months. And eventually could not prove the globe in a court of law anymore. And you're saying, oh, if you, if you lean on NASA, you're going to have some real problems. I'm going to put that out of your head right now. And, and that is for anyone listening to this, if they lean on a space agency, okay, tell me how you knew before a space agency. Because remember, the first picture of Earth was in 1972. How did you know before 1972, before the first blue marble shot was taken? And say, oh, NASA was older, fine, fine, you can fudge a few years if you want. But how did you know? And if they say science, then you say, what science? It's not that. It's, it's just that we told people it was a sphere for 400 and something years and nobody bothered to actually check up on the scientists. It's like, oh, well, they're smarter than I am. The spherical thing's got to be right. The math has got to be right. Well, again, until you get up high enough to take the picture, what do you really know? Moving on. This one's called Curved Earth Reality. Hi, Mark. My name is Scott Capron. Capron? C-A-P-R-O-N. Let's say Capron. Sounds cooler. Will you... Go read my comments on your YouTube video titled Career Land Surveyor No Curve Ever Measured. Uh, I suppose I will go look at your comments. That's, that's a new one where people are actually writing emails to me saying to read their comments. Uh, but yeah, you know what? I'll go over there and see what you wrote. I won't judge until I get there. This one's called No Subject. Hi, Mark. Excellent podcast on the Unexplained program. Questions for you, I believe, in the Flat Earth. Is there a dome surrounding the Earth as my, mankind 
been able to break through it into space. Uh, dome, yes. Break it through. Doubt it. Who made the dome? Uh, someone more powerful than us. Are we, mankind, just a zoo that someone or unknown people come to view like visiting a zoo? That's one option. I Hopefully it's not that uh, amusing. Like an amusement park? Maybe? Well, I don't know. Why don't the people in charge tell us the truth? Would you? <laughs> a little big. Kind of a big thing to tell people. The lies will come out into the light one day. Yes, they will. Best wishes, Keith from UK. I like that email. Quick questions to the point. This one's called quick suggestion read off air or on air prefer sooner. You should, Mark, you should make a documentary about SpaceX or a video about debunking Tesla Roadster. Uh, there's, that thing's been torn apart six ways from Sunday. It would be a good idea if, so, if someone could get a tire from a Roadster and put it in a vacuum chamber to see what happens. Here are a few memes for your enjoyment. Uh, what's your thought on the memes? Please use in your videos. And let me look at them real quick. The memes are 100 miles guaranteed my ass. <laughs> Car running into yeah. uh, Tesla GPS sucks. And yeah, they're not bad. Not bad, I may use those. Yeah, but as far as the Tesla tires go, they can make up any excuse they want. The, the point is, if there was even an ounce of air in those tires, it would blow. Anyway, uh, this one's called Survival Guide, please. Many thanks, peace. That's from Aloha No Hate. Yes, if you guys want a free survival guide to let you know what to do in terms of a long-term power outage, you can email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net and just put that in the title somewhere. Survival Guide, and I'll send it to you. It's about 100 pages, about two megs. Do try to print it out. Before the power goes out, if you get my meaning. This one's also called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. I've been on a binge of FE info this week, starting with Rob Skiba's material. I'm a believer, and it didn't take long. I heard you offer Survival Guide, so I'd like to ask for it. Any other resources you can offer? PDF books, links to videos. I have looked at God's creation for the proof of this disc with upturned edges, per August Picard. Thanks for whatever you can send, Valerie. And I sent her the... Uh, the, the survival guide and look if you're a follower of Rob Skeeves material hey great uh, you don't need much more from me especially if you're in a chapter and verse his website I mean uh, Zen Garcia's stuff is really good Robbie Davidson does some wonderful work Rob Skiba, of course one of the, the best flat earth websites out there which is called uh, testingtheglobe.com great great stuff so thank you for that Valerie this one's called free prepper guide thank you Mark and that's from swoof, Krishna CN but it's spelled Siri Krishna CN. Yep, I sent it to him. Cool. This one's called Video. Hey, Mark, I didn't forget about the New Jersey meetup. I'm thinking about getting DITRH to see if he can make it. Uh, anyway, I was wondering, do you ever think about making a video on how to make a video? I bet you could get a lot more Flat Earth videos. Uh, you have the experience and training. Perhaps you could show me how to use free software for PC, maybe for Macs and dummies. See what would happen. You know what? There's so many people that offer video editing courses. Uh, yeah, I just kind of did the trial by fire thing where I got the free program, Windows Live Movie Maker. And you can still get it. It's not even supported by Microsoft anymore. The version's, I don't know, two or three years old now, at least. And you put it on your machine and just kind of, there's a little tutorial. It's not very hard. I mean, it's really, really easy. I'm sure there's kids in grade school that could, that could rip through it more than me. But if you play with it long enough, you start to pick up a few of the transitions. But yeah, when I made the Flat Earth Clues, uh, it was done just in, in my very, very early days of Windows Live Movie Maker. So, this one's called... Oop, oop, oop. Went too far, too far. And now I am survival guide, please. Thank you from Lori Behrman. Yep. Send it to her. This one's called flat earth questions. Hopefully I don't have too many more survival guides in this batch. Uh, hi, Mark. Thanks for taking the time for all the emails and questions. I am 85% leaning towards the idea of flat earth, but there are still a few aspects that I am still not sure about. See, it's good. It's about what I expect. One of my questions is regarding the Canadian Space Agency. I know NASA always gets a bunch of flack for the material they produce, but what about Canada? We have the space arm on the radar sat too. Do you think or know that there is collusion with NASA maybe being the head or leader? Yes. Yeah. NASA blueprinted. Most of the stuff when it came to simulating space. Of course, the Soviet Union did a heck of a job as well. They were doing fake video stuff even earlier than we were. But, you know, Russian cinema wasn't, I mean, hell, American cinema just leaps and bounds ahead of everybody. We, Hollywood, that's where everyone goes to, to figure out what's going on. 
And so, yeah, NASA is in contact with all of them. And most of all the other, yes, space agencies. Also, do you have any thoughts or comments regarding the convex Earth theory and or soon-to-be-released documentary? And remember, I'm catching up on emails. Yeah, the convex Earth theory, the first hour was good when it came to the experiments, but having them talk to a Portuguese-speaking alien in the bushes on another video probably did not help their cause. Just saying. This one's called The Ultimate Fail. Mark, my most recent violation of Flat Earth's rule number one went like this. While trying to get my mother to at least contemplate the smallest possibility, poss possibility that our existence might be different than what is portrayed by CNN, NASA, and SpaceX, she told me this. Honey, I'll make a deal with you. When NDT says the Earth is flat, I'll look into it. So, Mark, do you think my mom is just about to come around to Flat Earth, or should I give her a couple weeks before I make another attempt? Regards, Lane. Uh, yeah, yeah, if, you're, if your mom's just waiting for the endorsement from NDT, she's going to be waiting for a while because he is the voice, he is the face of science, whether you like it or not. There are people out there, I mean, I know there's physicists that hate NDT, but he's, he's the guy that goes to the universities, he's the man with the microphone. So, yeah, you know, I just hold off on her for a while I, I wouldn't i wouldn't and also if you're gonna work on her work on the moon moon stuff first work on apollo that seems to be a, a great way to soften people up to the idea if you can get them to abandon the american space program that really really helps a lot this one's called best shortest video mark what are some of the best shortest videos to show someone new to fe thank you john john all you have to do is go to uh, youtube and type in flatter shortlist for new people and there's a playlist I made of, of my favorites that are out there. And some of them range from two minutes. Uh, some of them, you know, David Weiss is really big at, on doing really, really short ones. Or there's stuff that go two hours. But if you want short ones, there's a bunch to pick from in there. And, you know, you should probably preview them first before you give them to her or whoever it is. And I keep thinking of the mother one from the previous thing. And that should get you going. That's where I would go. So flat or short list for new people. It's a playlist. Most of the stuff in there is not mine. In fact, I'm not even sure because they change stuff is pretty often in there. I'm not even sure if any of it's mine at the moment. This one's called Toronto. Hey, Mark, while listening to Flat Earth Clues interview 159 from a little earlier this month, you mentioned that you were coming to Toronto. I live in Toronto, and if there's a conference or something happening here, it would be really great to attend. So far, I haven't found anything on the internet, thus the email. Thanks very much, Paul Blanchard. And yes, I just got back from Toronto. Shows you how old that email it is. And I already let him know that I was coming. But Patricia Steer and I did a meetup, and we went to a film festival, and there's no con. So we went to a meetup in Toronto. The conference is going to be in Edmonton, and that's going to be in August, a few months away. So June, July, August, yeah, and May. So a little ways off. This one's called Safe to Read on Air. It's good to know. Hey there, Mark. I would like to start by giving you a huge thank you for laying a foundation so I could get start my own research. I say before, I was pretty damaged as I was following people like Stephen Greer. All right, that guy. That guy's a joke. I also broke the first rule of Flat Club and told my wife and family. Ah, that's all right. That's why I use the Flat Club reference because that is, people always tell people. You just get size them up. I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Yes, yes, I know it's a rookie mistake and I and you hate to see it. I came from a strong Christian family, so now they think I'm a Satanist. <laughs> it's funny. Also, my wife told me that she didn't care if the earth was a pretzel. <laughs> Sorry. I should be laughing. Uh, maybe Flat Earth just isn't for everyone, huh? Oh, well, keep it flat, Mark, and please send Coast to Coast Interview and Survival Guide. Thank you. Okay, see, that, there's your rookie mistake right there at the end. It's like, oh, hey, by the way, I didn't put the Survival Guide reference or the Coast to Coast reference because I can't I have to. I can't put the Coast to Coast stuff on, on YouTube. You have to ask me for it, and I'll send it to you because they will copyright it. Uh, so he waits till the end of the email. Remember, I don't read all these. I just read like a first, you know, I kind of say, okay, it's three paragraphs. It looks like, you know, it's not written in crayon. So uh, yeah, I will send you the survival guide. As soon as I'm done with this, this goes into my to-do pile. Okay. This one's called South Pole. Hi, Mark. What do you think? Uh, when circum question mark when circumnavigating the South Pole heading west, if the Earth is a globe, then the ice wall curves off to the left. If the Earth is a flat plane, then the ice wall curves off to the right. Uh, yes. Highest regards, Tony Isbell. Yes, I think. Yeah, pretty sure. I know what you're going what you're going for there. 
Uh, this one's called I have a question never really heard this ever talked about mark Thanks for the position you have taken and you continue to stay Calm and steadfast. I realize there are still millions if not billions of people that have not woken up or really heard this effie thing But here's my question. First of all, I'm a Christian and I think we are living at the end times of this current time I agree also, I think that this construct will not last too much longer, uh, but this is where I kind of fight myself. He actually wrote kind of. We could set here for 20 more years showing videos proof, waking up people and proving over and over again, fighting it back against the trolls. I can't answer this. And my mail browser just went backwards. That's awesome. Hang on. I can't answer this. I want your take. Um... Do you think this knowledge will have to be forced on the population or how can that even be done with the documentary that's going to come out, which you guys are going to hear a whole bunch about. You can go to BehindTheCurveFilm.com. It is a mainstream documentary. They just finished it. They just released uh, it at, or premiered it at the film festival in Toronto at the Hot Docs Film Festival. And I was there to see it twice. And yes, this will be how it gets into mainstream, which I'm sure I will go into much detail uh, during the Globusters thing today. Anyway, we could sit here if this construct is not demolished or if the end is not approaching, which I think it is, but we could sit here not really gaining further to exposing this on a mass scale until somebody actually goes, well, it doesn't have to go to Antarctica or something to that extent. I feel we need, we need to put our heads together, stop focusing on the new proofs and stop fo start focusing on how we can all get together to push this really over the edge. I hope you fully understand what I'm asking. I do. I actually do. I'm not calling for violence in any way. I'm talking about pushing this reality completely over the edge. No pun intended. Again, thank you, sir. And that's from Jeff. You're very welcome, Jeff. This one's called... What's this one called? Flat Earth. Go figure. Hi, Mark. Greetings for, from Eastburn, Eastburn, England. Loved listening to your shows my brother asked me outright what would you say if i told you the earth was flat i responded by saying that i wouldn't be surprised in the slightest as i have always taken an interest in the globe as a child of about seven i i always took on the same i always took out the same book at the library it was all about humans including the theory of evolution and most importantly space and our solar system i always returned to the picture depicting a cutaway model of the earth showing the different layers i always remember thinking to myself how do they know this about earth surely no human has ever traveled to the center of the earth they'd be burned to his crisp how come i can feel the movement at all these and many other questions also question our orbit speed of rotation and distances to the sun and other planets i've always had a fascination of space especially the moon why does it always face the same direction why does it not spin hmm. then suddenly one night about five years ago i'd fallen asleep on the beach i woke up and it was dark the moon was full and bright the sky was totally clear Suddenly, I noticed something odd about the moon, which made me question my own memories. The moon was not facing the same direction as it always had. It had rotated clockwise 90 degrees. I was looking up. I st it stayed in that position as it traveled across the sky and out of sight. Days went by, and I couldn't stop thinking about what I had seen. I wanted to see that moon, but it was overcast every night. I began to think that maybe I had dreamt it. Weeks went by. I spoke to friends and family about this and asked them if they knew which way the moon faced. And they, they said the same thing, that it always faced the same direction. Eventually, I got to see the moon again. And to my surprise, it was in exactly the same position I had always known. I sat for hours watching and waiting, eventually falling asleep. I awoke a few hours later, early hours. And again, it rotated 90 degrees. It was kind of freaked out by this. Hmm. Maybe there, you were being shown something. Maybe it was a sign. I don't know. Over the next few nights, I sat on the beach watching and waiting, eventually noticing the moon had moved. It begun to rotate. It took approximately two hours to complete the 90 degree turn. Wow, that's kind of cool. I sat there in total disbelief at its, as it stopped rotating and kept its position over the rest of the sky. The following night, it was back in its normal position. Each time I witnessed this event, it was a different time. Anyway, I just want to share that with you and wonder if you know anything about this. Nope. I've never heard this uh, looked in explanations, but none are plausible to me How can the moon rotate only 90 degrees and no further then the following night be back in its original position? Love what you guys do I've always felt something wasn't right We have been lied to not just about earth space and the moon landings, but many many other things too What an exciting time to be here wake up everyone time to know we are in all incredible and very special beings Let's just see how far the rabbit hole really goes take care Love light and peace to all Bob Jellyman P.S. Tattoo I did for my brother a few days ago. You might find this one interesting. Uh, you know what? I'm going to view it right now. Let's see what a tattoo looks like with this guy. And I don't know what sort of writing that is. Is it Hebrew? I don't know. Interesting, though. Cool. Anyway, thanks for that. This one's called Flat Earth. 
Hey there, sorry to bother you and sorry for my language. English is not my main. I'm Portuguese. Pretty good so far. So before anything, I would like to say that when I so, oh boy, saw, saw people talking about the flat earth, I thought to myself, those people are retarded. The earth is round. They live in a different world. They're mental, etc. But I'm sorry. After some time, I decided, let's see what those guys have to say. And wow, I saw this link to a video and OMFG, what can I say? I am sure I want the truth out and I'm afraid of talking with people about this. They will call me crazy, but now I do not believe anymore the earth is round. I have a little child. I would love to teach her the truth and not the BS they teach in school. I have some questions about this. Would love to know if you will answer them for me. Just thank you for your time and effort, effort <laughs> to reveal the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Email me questions. Yeah. By all means. Send me what you got. This one's called Fiber Optic Bandwidth. Mark, I tried to find it online, but around four years ago, Bell Labs, I believe they made a significant breakthrough, but it was just in software. No physical modifications. Bandwidth was increased just by installing the software by 3.78. It was just an algorithm discovery. At the time, Australia was planning to install three new cables to the mainland, much cheaper to just buy the software. No reply necessary. That's from Ron. Hmm, thanks, Ron. This one's called Me and the Lion's Den with a Half Dozen Ballers. Hi, Mark. Here's a link to a debate I did with Steve McRae and a bunch of other ball believers. There was a flat earth girl named Debbie who didn't do anything but yell fake for over an hour and a half. <laughs> then she got booted. I took punches for the next hour and a half or so. In the end, I at least gained the respect of the guys on the panel and some in the chat. Not bad. I was not totally prepared for this, but the next time will be a different story. They also want to debate on me being a young earth Christian. Hi, uh, ha ha, this will be good. These guys also debated Kent Hovind a couple of times. Hope all is well with you, bro. I see you're keeping busy. Good stuff. I will call in Tuesday to talk to you. If you have a call-in show, these guys are trying to say that your military experts are BS. Really? Then that's a lot of them because I had a whole bunch of, I still do. You can look at the testimony shows. There's a whole bunch of military experts out there. Yes, I purposely typed in shite, oh, S H I T E. Uh, yes, they know the Coriolis effect is accounted for. Well, gotta run. Yes, they said they know the Coriolis effect is accounted for. Well, okay. Because uh, I have yet to find a military guy that will testify to that fact. Well, gotta run later. Salah Shalom, Josh. Cool, Josh. Thank you, man. This one's called Denver Conference. Mark, will you be having the Flat Earth Man play there? Okay, first off, it's not my conference. The conference is run by Robbie Davidson up in Canada. You can check out his YouTube channel called Celebrate Truth. And the second question is yes. As far as I know, the Flat Earth Man is going to play there. So it's going to be a good time. This one's called Sweden. Hi, Mark. Do you know any groups in Sweden that hold these views? I don't. I mean, not the United States groups are pretty separate from the Europe groups. The Europe groups kind of do their own thing. Yeah, we talked to some people in in London and some in Australia and stuff like that. But the European stuff, that they're generally doing their own thing. Same with Indonesia. Anybody in the Pacific Rim. I, like, but but it's but thank you for asking. I have always pondered why the stars in the sky are always in the exact same place every night they spin around the pole star then it would not look like our leaning spinning earth that goes in orbit around the sun which enters the orbit through the space the curvature cannot be proven either why is it so important to preserve these secrets from the people best regards john johansson and yeah watch the clues again i i, I spell it out pretty easily and then look, w would you tell the people I, I put that to anyone out there if you found out the world was flat and you had power over economies and cultures and stuff like that. Would you tell the people? Would you put that out there? I'm guessing you wouldn't. I mean, yeah, your first instinct. Well, people need to know. And then you start thinking about it more and more. And it's like, ooh, maybe not. You'd hold on to it until you figure out a way to spin it. And that's what they're doing. This one's called Hello, Greetings from India. Hey, Mark, I would like to thank you for all the hard work you put into everything. I love people who can judge problems with a critical eye from a neutral point of view. There are many people rising in the community and always essential for such people to stay in touch and share ideas. I hope we can exchange some messages in the future as I have also researched Flat Earth for about a year now. I am an engineering student and I've always been curious about human origins. The modern astronomy is just killing our human creativity and human spirit. I believe that all the space organizations are doing 
doing what they are doing, exploring for mankind, yet they are hiding, finding from the slave class by using subconscious mind control techniques. Please refer soon. Thank you. Regards, Vivek. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good summary. I like that. This one's called Scientists Find Unusual Ice Around a Diamond. Hi, Mark. Quick question. Have you already talked about, read, or even know about the supposed new type of ice found inside of diamonds found deep inside the earth? Supposedly, this type of ice known as Ice 7 was until now not even found on their BS Spaceball version of Earth until a scientist says the discovery now proves there is water inside Spaceball Earth's mantle. Found this interesting and curious why they are creating this recent discovery and also makes hip hop artists rocking their ice diamond necklaces, watches, etc. a lot more literal. Ha, huh, yeah, it's good. Anyway, stay flat, bro. Paul and Krista M., members of the sergeants, all Mark's Flat Earth Army. That's really, really cool. And the link is from Science News. Scientists find unusual ice inside a diamond. I have not seen that story, so I will I will check that out if I get a chance. This one's called, oops, 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 oops. This one's called Radiation Levels on the Rise. Hi, Mark. Was just wondering your thoughts about how they now say that cosmic radiation levels are on the rise compared to when the Apollo missions took place in the 60s and 70s. Think this is a ruse to make human space flight more difficult for private companies to attempt? Yes, I do. Tour around the moon getting pushed back? Yes, indeed. Or are they finally releasing actual numbers, which in turn makes going up there much more daunting? All of the above. Well, I mean, that's probably fake numbers, but yeah. You remember um, Elon Musk and the SpaceX? They were supposed to send a tourist, two tourists around the moon. Like now, like this summer. It's supposed to happen, and they don't even, they haven't even tested a capsule. So when's that happening? They can't. They're just dragging their feet. It's never, ever, 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 ever going to happen. Everything that Elon Musk says, every word that comes out of his mouth, you just assume that it's like, it's it's not necessarily even a lie. It's just a wild boast that is never, ever going to, ever going to take. It's like, oh, I'm, sol- I'm going to solve Puerto Rico's power problems. We're going to colonize Mars. I'm going to create a super plane that's going to go to China and less than two hours and it's going to cost just a little bit more than an economy ticket he said all these things i'm gonna we're gonna send tourists around the moon in 2018 yeah and now now what was the latest thing he just came out with a couple days ago something like he wants to get into the candy business where does that come from you go from software to electric cars to a private space company to the candy business unless he's going down the Willy Wonka path, which is sacrilege in my book. Anyway, moving on. This one's called Satellites. Hi, Mark. Recently started to learn about Flat Earth. I love live. I've I've watched loads of your videos and hours of others in the community. I'm wondering how we have weather reports and are able to predict the weather if we supposedly have no satellites orbiting the Earth. Struggling with this one. Any thoughts here, Den? Uh, what you have ground-based radar. Doppler radar is not satellite radar. Uh, there's pl- plenty of radar stations, and you can use high-altitude weather planes by the governments if you want to augment it a bit. You don't need satellites to do the weather stuff. Although it's it's pretty cool because yeah, if you zoom out far enough, you know, and and make it seem like it's a globe. Yeah, not buying it. Nope, nope, nope. But it's a good one. I like that. How's their weather? How's that? How's their local weather news where they show the curvature of the earth? Uh huh. This one's called Wishing You Well, and it is Hello, Mark. Just thought I'd say how much I appreciate you. Thank God for all you do and spread the truth. Could you send me a survival guide and post my vanity plate? I had made it in Oklahoma City. Boy, did I miss this? Uh, hang on here. View vanity plate. Holy smokes. I think I, oh my lord, I've. I missed this vanity plate. It's flat. I T Z one T Z F L A T. Oh man, now I gotta go do this. And and again, he didn't put survival guide until later. So, I, all right. So now I've got another. Li- I've had so many license plates in the last month. It's incredible. All right, this one's called "Excited." You are coming to Toronto, the Creation Museum, for a debate. Sorry, I could have not put two things in the same email. Excited to see you in my hometown of Toronto. Going to be a great event. Anything you need, name it. By the way, Toronto is a beautiful city, uh, especially in the spring and the summer. It's it was wonderful to, to be there. It's a it's a really cool cool city. And I, beforehand, the only thing I knew about Toronto was what I learned from Scott Pilgrim the movie. Um, would you be interested in debating people from the Creation Museum in Kentucky? 
Totally different topic. Once again, sorry for the confusion. Yeah, I, of course, it's part of my declaration of war against mainstream science, which is, if you, if you get me there, I will uh, absolutely debate anyone. I don't care who it is. I'll debate a whole panel of people. Put me one on five, one on ten. Although if it's one on ten, it gets a little messy because then they just kind of over-talk each other. Even one on five, they're going to be talking over each other. But I would be happy to do that, and it, but you have to fly me out. And I know some people said, "Whoa, you're you're just looking. At, you know, why do we have to fly you out? Why don't you fly yourself out?" And I said, "Well, you know, I probably could fly myself in certain cases, but then you're just begging for a troll to set the whole thing up. Because it, let's say I, you know, I was going to pay for everything myself going out. Then you, anybody could email me, say, "Oh yeah, come out such and such a day. Just meet at this museum. We'll have everything ready for you. Go. They use a fake name. I show up. There's nobody there. Just crickets." It's like, ah, crap. Yeah, no, I'm not going through that. That is that is classic trolling. Someone could, they, that that would literally, if I said I paid my own nickel to go out there, someone would do that probably in the first week and, and make it super far away. Might even be like Europe. Although if it's Europe, I'd probably try to confirm. Anyway, this one's called Flat Earth. Hello, Mark. My name is Daniel. I live in Australia. I'm a 110% believer in the flat earth. I was hooked in minutes on day... When I came across a video, the only question I have watching your videos, I need a little help. Like I said, I'm in Australia and my parents were born in Argentina and I have traveled many times from Sydney to Auckland and then directly from Auckland to Buenos Aires many, many times. Could the plane reach such a distance as per the flat earth concept? If I remember this and a 10 hour flight, Grom, Auckland to Buenos Aires, let me know what you think. Cheers, Grom. Is that a word? Cheers, Daniel. Yeah, it's again, it's not the flight. I, there's some people who say, well, they're fake. They're not fake. It doesn't really matter to me. When I did the clues, I more cared about the route, and hopefully they haven't fixed it since then. And that is when you try to follow the plane with GPS, the GPS drops off entirely. Latitude and longitude literally go dark when they start getting over water outside of land radar range. That's what I, 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 I care about the route more than I care about the actual flight. How are they getting there? You got to be able to prove that to me in, in complete latitude and longitude coordinates. This one is called The Video is Another Flat Earth Clue. Hey, Mark, love your podcast. I thought you might be interested in this video I made that proves the ISS sits much lower than 250 miles up. Mm. They are most likely in a weather balloon when they show footage from their International Space Station. If you like it, please share and feel free to get the word out about this video. Thanks, Mark. Take care and good job with everything you do. Can't thank you enough. That's from Mike Johnson. And the link is the Earth is bigger or the International Station is much lower. That's and on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Love everybody thinking outside the box. It's excellent. This one's called, Can You Make This Stuff Up? Hey, Mark, can you make this stuff up? My friend asked me to take him to the Sacramento Metro Airport for his flight to Florida. I asked him to take a picture of the horizon when the plane was at cruising altitude. He is not a flat earther yet. He called me from Florida. And I asked him to look at the photo. He said that he looked out the window, could not see the earth for the clouds, so he did not take the picture. Then he added that the clouds forming the horizon just looked flat. Hmm. Therefore, there was nothing, no curve to see or photograph. I leave the conclusion to one's imagination. Keep it flat, Jim. Thank you, Jim. This one's called Flat Earth Paper. Hi, Mark. Here is my Flat Earth Paper. I feel like I left a lot out, but it was only supposed to be three to five pages, so I already went way over that. If you have a chance to look it over and give me feedback, it'd be great. I know you're probably pretty busy, so if you don't have time, don't worry about it. Thanks, Ryan. I, you know what? I will look at it. I will put that in my things to do pile, but... I, I, at this point, I mean, that was um, six weeks ago. I'm sorry, guys. I, just, I get so many emails now. And one day, yes, I will, I, I will I will do a few emails. I won't be able to do them every week. I know that. This one's called Check This Out. Hi, Mark. I don't know if someone already brought this to your attention, but I thought it may be a good idea to give you a heads up before this documentary goes in line in seven days. Yep, the Convex Earth. Yep, yep, yep. The, uh, the Brazilian team that was down there, they made the Convex Earth documentary. But remember, it wasn't an American group so it was dubbed in several different languages so it didn't get, get that much traction oh and he says please send me a copy of your survival guide thanks for all you do daniel and yes i did send him a copy this one's called coast to coast hi mark I'd really like you to send me those coast to coast interviews please sir i did get a chance to see the one interview you did on the piers morgan show though when you first unloaded it a couple of months back also i thought you did a fantastic job during that interview and i think that astronaut was sweating bullets the entire time anyway thanks in advance i appreciate all the work you do doing for the flyers community thanks again Corey. yep yeah, most people have not seen 
the Good Morning Britain show that I did with Piers Morgan and the astronaut in question was Terry Virts, who was recently retired and he's got a book with some pretty space pictures in it and he was on there. He was actually in the studio in London. I was coming in through Skype and Terry, I didn't realize this, remember it was a very, very short segment, uh, less than 10 minutes and Terry would not talk to me, would not address me directly. He would only talk to Piers. Would and I threw everything I could in a short amount of time, did not interrupt, was not going to get cut off by those guys. <clears throat> the connection, I stayed all the way through. And I know some people was like, oh, you should have attacked more. Well, it's not how it works. When you come through Skype, <clears throat> you are at the mercy of the producers. You do not want to give them an excuse, especially Piers Morgan. That's the guy I was most cautious about. And he was nice to me during this. But Piers Morgan is is known to go after guests. If he doesn't like you, you will know it in a hurry, and he will call you all sorts of names, and he didn't, so that's fine. This one's called Requesting Survival Guide. Please, that's from David Griffin. Yep, 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 send it to you. This one's called Admiral Bird. Mark, I realized this morning what Bird saw when in his interview he said it land bigger than America. He penetrated far enough through Antarctica to see beyond the circle of the Earth to see one of the four corners of the Earth. Hmm, maybe, maybe. I believe it was south. Oh, remember, he didn't see it. He didn't see it in 1954. He was close, I think, in 1954, because the very next mission, which was 55 to 56, that was Operation Deep Freeze. And that's when I think he they finally figured it out. I think he was close, though. Uh, anyway, I mailed the Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. Say, oh, oh, he sent the same email to the Truth is Stranger Than Fiction. Okay, cool. That's from Ron. Thank you, Ron. This one's called Bombay Community. Nope, nope, that's who sent it. It's called Video Dated 12-1-2015. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. I've been watching your video and listening. Not sure what to make of the entire theory of the shape of the earth. I do have several questions. Have you conducted any thought or research on the conversation that has been circulating around that when they set up the Cassini satellite craft, the images returned back were on top of the stack of planets and Earth's setup and pillars? Hmm. Yeah. No, I've not seen that. It was stated the astrophysicist De DeGrasse reviewed the images and did not know what to make of it. Why would they not tell the truth? I know that you have stated hiding God would rather... Wouldn't that start with the Vatican? Remember, the Vatican only is one religion. Remember, it's Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. So, Vatican has some influence, but not total influence. Last, flat earthers believe that we really do not have satellites and why... We need cell towers. I do not know what to believe. My mind is open, but I find it very frustrating, as you should. Uh, I do wish I had a degree in geology and astronomy. Thanks for reading. I encourage you not to give up. My best, Andrea Beck. She's from Bombay Woods Community. That's out in Delaware. Thank you for that. This one's called Thank You from Kentucky. Hi, Mark. I greatly enjoy your videos and wanted to thank you for all your work. I've been flat for two years and counting. Your voice means a, a lot to people like me. Take care and stay flat. That's from Christy Rogers in Kentucky. Very welcome, Christy. Thoughts. That's what this one's called. Mark, I'm watching your video on YouTube about the flat earth. What about the magnetic poles? The fact that the magnetic north pole is moving seems rather interesting. Yes, it does. Like there's some sort of electromagnetic thing under there kind of moving around. Have you ever done any research on this that goes along with the flat earth theory? Eh, not a lot of research on it. Only that, yeah, the magnetic north does move a little bit, but it kind of varies around the center. So is there some sort of giant electromagnetic force that's kind of, you know, wobbling under there a little bit? Yeah, maybe. This one's called Windows 10 Lock Screen and Horizon from the ISS. Hi, Mark. F two things. First, has anybody told you about Windows 10 placing a random lock screen of the globe? This has never been one of my lock screens before. They're random and always a landscape of some type. About two weeks ago, the globe just came up and there it was for about three days. Kind of creepy if you ask me. Last, I wrote about using the azimuthal map and placed it in Excel and plotted cities. While well, I've also calculated distance the ISS should see from its height in space as far as the horizon line. The ISS is approximately 240 miles high. Its circle of horizon distance should be about 1400 miles radius. I came up with this using Pythagoras. I used the earth globe calculator and it came out the same using at least twice found radius. Here's my challenge. Uh, look at the footage from the ISS to its 
pics of the globe is what nasa is representing exact as far as its depiction of what should be seen from the iss on the globe of 3959 miles radius i passed a pic of limit line of a circle blah 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 i don't know it's interesting what he's basically saying is uh the iss should be able to see uh a vast distance a lot yeah limit the, the limit line of what you can see i well, i will have to I'll, I'll look up and see if anyone has posted anything on this it's interesting though this one's called survival guide please send me your send me your survival guide thank you for what you do sincerely sherry you're welcome sherry this one's called sky stone hey mark i've been flat smacking for about eight months now and really love your youtube channel every night i pop on one of your videos and fall asleep to it no don't do that you and odd are my favorites anyway i had a question about the sky stone do you believe it's actually is pieces from the firmament oh yeah right that blue stuff and if so wouldn't that make it impossible to see any constellations yeah well unless the constellations are part of what's up there part of the display system part of the projection i've seen pictures of the stone and yes it's sky blue but not does not appear to see through yeah i mean if it's part of a technology system i don't know don't know it's interesting though i like the the sky but my word of the day today, today is interesting the sky blue stones if you haven't looked it up people say that it's this really 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 blue ice now we've seen glaciers where there's already some pretty blue ice so is it just a chunk of that and people are just kind of extrapolating off that maybe i would love to hear your thoughts on the matter and that's from big nate i will revisit the whole sky stone thing and see if there's anything i can glean from it wow the font on this is huge this is called first contact dear mark all i can say is that you've done a good job thanks for saying thanks for sharing ever since i was a young child i can still remember my primary school teacher telling the story of how old civilizations believed that the world was flat and could sail off over the edge and they were very fearful of that the teacher then laughed and said what stupid people he then said to us how could they fall off the edge of the world when it was round yep exactly can't fall off the edge if it's round so from a very early age i was brainwashed like all of us i grew up very disillusion disillusionized in a very disillusionized world what i thought was right and wrong and also growing up in a dairy farm didn't help much much either and everything why, why? what's wrong with the dairy farm and everything was to do as i say not as i do it was even more confusing you know that restarting my life at 62 is so exciting as i have searched for these answers most of my past life only to keep searching with kind regards william h richards well better late than never thanks much for that this one's called survival guide wow I, I wonder if it's because I, I have, there's more, I wonder if it's perpetual where, where it's keeps perpetuating itself, where people keep saying, oh, give me your survival guide. And there's other people listening going, wait, should I get this survival guide? There's these other people that want it. Maybe, but I've been saying on a lot of them. It's good. I guess if it helps you. This one's called survival guide. Great work. Passing on the word. Be good. All the best. Thank you. Matt Wyatt. He's in the UK. This one's called Flat Earth. Hello, my name is Cody, and I just had a question for you. What do you think is beyond the edge of the Earth? I think it's an unlimited universe. Do you think there is more land or just some type of drop-off? No, I think there's more land, but I think there's a barrier there. I've been doing my own research lately, and it's very overwhelming with what I've seen. I used to be all about space and just love the mystery about other planets, and now I'm starting to think completely opposite. Also, my last question is, do you believe in UFOs and aliens? I do, but I don't think they're from planets. I think they're interdimensional or just part of another system or part of or old versions of us. That's my favorite. I do, I, it does seem there is a lot of evidence showing that something is going on in the sky. Yeah, absolutely. You want to you want to see it for yourself. Go out, buy a pair of 5X night vision binoculars, night owls, the ones I use, and get, just start looking at the sky and watch the satellites, watch them for a couple nights, and then tell me what you see. It will freak you out. Uh, let's see show ancient aliens showing all their evidence just want to know what you think of this yep yep what i just said that's from cody mckinley this one's called mr sergeant all right uh so what about bob what about bob trolling tactics are vast to assume someone is incompetent or un uneducated simply because their grasp of homonyms is lacking seems a bit too impetuous you have mentioned receiving another message from this particular bother and i was wondering how the story continued bob 
Oh, one of my trolls. Still unwilling to check his papers. He might be more than capable of intelligent debate and the grammatical digs were meant as a test. Been there, done that, and survived it, so I thought you could benefit from my sharing the experience. It's a nasty little device. Being one of those obsessive grammar Nazis myself, it plays on the desire to require certain points in order, uh, points, of o points of order in conversation. Pearls before swine and the like. I never liked that saying. But I wonder at the educated masses and how many have been open to the flat earth. How does that number match up to the uneducated population or at least those without a strict study within the walls of academia? Enough idioms, I think. But well, maybe one more. Don't toss the champagne with the cork. <laughs> All the best, Shauna Collins. Thank you, Shauna. This one's called, hey, guess what? Survival Guide. Mark, could you please send me your survival guide? Thanks, Josh. This one's called Can We Coffee? Okay, let's see. Hi, Mark. Uh, if you just got a text, that was me. But I don't think that number works. I'm hoping you're still living in Washington. I am. I need to tell you about my personal existence up until last year. At that point, I saw your video. Wasn't looking even videos. All of them and on repeat for days. And after that and running uh, off every friend I have and becoming incredibly distressed. Man, I was kind of mad at you. Not my fault. I, didn't, I told you, first rule of Flat Club, do not talk about Flat Club. And you did. And then I realized something. And then and they ran from the truth. And they, possi and they probably already know and are scared. But you know what? You saved my life, my soul, and my mind. I may be still very broken inside, but I finally have complete faith. And that is something I have begged and prayed for since my birth. My first words, I want to go home. While at my house, my mom knew what I meant and told me to wait. From the bottom of my heart own hell <laughs> to the throne of God himself, who I will bow to one day. I thank you with every fire burn my being. Thank you with every ounce of the genuine love that Christ has endowed me with. Thank you. Wow. That's very nice. Your contribution to this world is so much greater than you could ever, ever fully comprehend. And you have the faith in that in the first place. Keep doing God's work. There are far too many who just pray for others and have no intention of being the tool to answer the prayer though. Be well, and I truly hope this message reaches you. If it does, call me, and let's go for coffee. I'm not far away, just in Buckley. That's uh, from Casey. Thank you for that. And I, I, yeah, I, I will try. I have been getting more and more busy as this thing. In fact, I was gone for a week. I was up in freaking Toronto doing that whole thing. And then I'm going to be doing some more stuff here pretty soon. Uh, next one I think is in Los Angeles. This one's called Joe Rogan Conspiracy. I have learned that you guys were right about Joe Rogan. I think he has been bought out, you think? Nah, you know what? I'm not going to be... I, I can't be too hard. I made a video about him, but I can't be too hard on Joe Rogan because they got to him. That's just it. Look, if you have... It, it's, why, is it called, it's, why it's called leverage. If they have a pressure point on you, they will squeeze if they, if they need to. And in his case, wife, family, career, you know, mix of the three. Yeah, he flipped. And he paid for it. And but I mean, still, he still has a massive internet presence and he gets to interview a lot of people. So, and you know, part of him maybe thinks, well, maybe I'm okay. Uh, let's see. He won't even take the time to look into Flat Earth. Even, no, no, he is looking to Flat Earth. Uh, even though he does say in his podcast he's open minded to anything, but won't take the time or, or of day or to even listen to anyone about Flat Earth. I've lost all respect for him. I also want to know if Mark from New York has anything to follow, like Facebook or a YouTube channel. Yeah, it's called Zulu One. Z U L U O N E, I believe. I've lost all respect. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, also, the Uber driver in California. Yeah, Flat Earth Uber. Or Uber Flat Earth? Yeah, I'll find it. Just type in Flat Earth Uber. And those two are my favorite ones who call into your show. Oh, that's nice. I'm following a lot of people in Flat Earth on YouTube. You might also want to uh, also write. Spelled right wrong. Uh, about this leading to more. I feel awake now. I feel like something is going on over in Antarctica. I've seen videos with a lot of bases there definitely hiding something or protecting anyway. That's all for now. Thanks and stay flat. Yep, yep, yep. This one's called Quick Silly Question. Hi, Mark. Love all the work and effort you put into truth discovery. This is probably a silly question, but I'll ask anyway. If we had a flat surface measuring 300 miles, we wanted to place an imaginary 300 mile solid wood piece. Would we need 11.36 additional miles of wood per curvature calculator? Oh, I, 
and <laughs> would this be calculated when doing large construction projects? Not sure if you covered this already. Would love to hear an answer. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Joe, no, 300, 300 miles, place an imaginary 300 mile solid wood piece. Would we need an additional 11 miles of wood? No, you wouldn't because 300 miles is 300 m miles. No, no, the, the, no, that part doesn't change. You're still, no, the mileage still is still the same, you, wh whether it's wood or string or whatever it is, or pipe, you still, it's the, um, no, no, you shouldn't need, no, you shouldn't need anything else. Otherwise, all the distances would be completely messed up. No, I, I get what you're asking there. No, I, and I appreciate that you're thinking outside the box here, but no, don't make it more complicated than it is. No, no, no. And I know you linked the, the earth but no, you're, you don't, don't, don't make it more complicated. Jeez. Scaring me for a second there. This one's called, you helped big time, 20 million uploads. Well, not 20 million uploads, 20 million search results. As a matter of fact, yeah, there gives, that gives you an idea from the 23rd of March till now it's jumped from 20 to 20.5, an extra 500,000. Uh, thanks, buddy, for helping the Flyers movement. Last email, I thought they were reporting lower numbers. Now I have a thousand hours of learning. <laughs> a thousand. There's a lot more than that. There's so many flat Earth videos now. You could not go through them all in a lifetime. Not even close. And it gener we're generating so much more every day that uh, yeah, now it's up to twenty point five, which is huge. It's such a massive topic. This one's called. We're gonna do a few more. Can someone discover something breakthrough that all the scientists miss? Greetings, Mark. One challenge the FE community has been given is this. Is it reasonable to believe in something upon which no mainstream scientist nor intellectual body agree? While such a question might seem uh, rhetorical, the answer might surprise you. In the early part of the 20th century, a young farmer named Philo Farnsworth invented the first television receiver. He was able to produce a working model while RCA's top scientists struggled for years unsuccessfully. They were never able to duplicate or reverse engineer his prototype. Eventually, RCA had to strike a deal with the Farnsworth in order to mass produce the new technology. I always remember, amateurs built the Ark, professionals built the Titanic. Mmm, it's good. Stay flat, regards, Jeff. Very cool. This one's called Couple Thoughts. Two attachments. Uh, just curious if there's any footage of a meteor going up from the horizon and moving through the sky. No, as far as I know, almost like it missed us and skipping across the atmosphere but going up. Why do they always come down? Yeah, if the Earth was a ball, they should be going in every direction. Yes, absolutely right. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, I stole that yep, yep, yep from uh, Krieger and Archer. And I know their last season is this year and I haven't, I haven't done it yet. But I will. I'll get to it. This one's called Forward Asteroids and Meteors. Really, what are the odds of two of these in a row? Ah, I'm sorry. He sent it to me twice. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Oh, what are we going to end with? Maybe this one? We'll see. Uh, taking Flat Earth discussion to the next level. So, sounds promising. Mark, I love listening to your show. I've been researching Flat Earth for over a year now. There are definitely things out there they are not telling us. Most flat earth information out there is to get the message out about flat earth and trying to convince people it is flat. For those of us who already believe it's flat, are there any other resources that I'm not finding to take the discussion to the next level? If the earth is flat with a dome, who created it? Why did they create it? Who created the creator? Who truly knows the truth? Are there societies out there that have been first have firsthand knowledge that the world is flat, like the Freemasons, the Illuminati? How many people know the government, CIA, FBI, Rothschild family, major church figures like the Pope? Most information I am finding trickles some of those questions in there, but the vast majority is just reinforcing me the same information that I already know. Any suggestions where I should be looking to take discussions to the next level? Thanks, John. Honestly, it, and I won't end on this one, it really depends on your audience. And that is, as far as discussions to the next level, uh, that's mostly within the community. And there's lots and lots and lots of people that are doing experiments. They're doing advanced map making. They're doing uh, more NASA reveals. In fact, I'm going to be doing one here pretty soon. Uh, there's all sorts of fun little things you can do. Uh, but as far as a general, you know, what, what your version of next level and my version of next level, probably a different thing. Just keep going through the media. There's bound to be something that you like and focus on wherever your strength is if it's scientific proofs focus on that if it's long distance photography focus on that if it's van allen belts if it's the vacuum of space if it's the moon eclipse whatever 
Focus on your strengths. So I sound like I'm doing a self-help video. This one's called Please Send All Coast to Coast Programs. By the way, love your work. Signed, Closet Flat Earther for now. All right, so I won't tell him your name, Dan. I definitely won't tell him your last name. This one's called The Truman Show. You know what? Maybe, maybe we'll end with this one. This sounds, this sounds like it could work. Hi, Mark. Just finished the, this movie, The Truman Show, for the first time, and I'm sitting here in shock. It's from 1998, so a lot of people could have missed it 20 years ago now. Not only is it by far one of the best movies I've ever seen, you know, my, my favorite as well, but it mirrors my personal flatter story almost perfectly. Until I watched it, I never realized why you include The Truman Show concept so often in your introductions. Now I understand why you like that reference so much. Yep, yep, yep. One scene from the movie where a schoolboy Truman says he wants to be the explorer like Magellan rocked my world. The school teacher pulls down a big world map and tells him he's too late. The entire world has already been explored. This is how I felt for much of my life. As a young teen, I felt like an insignificant speck of dust. Sometimes I struggled to find purpose and meaning in the world. I still came to terms with this, and after searching for it, I still found plenty of meaning to life on a globe. But now, thanks to people like yourself, a new kind of mystery has opened up for me. Thanks, Mark. I can't wait to see where his, this real life story is going. How is it going to end? Whether they like it or not, everyone is in the same situation here. It feels like we're in Truman's sailboat. Not exactly sure what the other side might look like, but just happy to be on our way. Yours truly, Matt. Yep, that's the one I'm going to end on. So that's it for this time. Thank you, everyone who emailed me. And in the future... Everyone just shoot their emails to msergeant23 at comcast.net and I'll do what I can until next time, maybe next week.